when you took over as the voice of the WNBA in 2013, I think that was, yeah. you, you were already doing NBA games at that point. Did you look at the WNBA as a stepping stone? Did you anticipate that you would potentially hold on to it for over a decade now? No, I never thought I would be doing it as long as I am because I was naive to the gem of a project it is to work on from a broadcasting standpoint. Yeah. And I was naive to how wonderful the league is and how incredible the basketball is. When I was first asked about it, I, and I've been honest about this, I kind of was like, okay, that's cool, but I'm already doing MBA. Like why, you know, why is this such a great gig for me? Right. And there were people inside ESPN, I give credit to Lori Orlando and Tim McCarthy, who were really like, trust us, you're going to love this. You're going to love working with Rebecca Lobo. And this league is awesome to work on. And they were 100% right. And it did not take me long to appreciate how awesome the basketball was how incredible it is to work with Rebecca and Holly, which it's just working with them is one of my favorite things in life, never mind in work. And, and then how much I enjoy being a part of this growing league. You know, I love feeling like we're all on the same team. We're all invested in this property and this project and this league. And we all truly believe that it has you know, an atmospheric rise still to go with yeah. all the growth that's happened already. And so I don't know, you know, I never really look at, I, I never in the moment look at any gig or job as a stepping stone because I think you don't do the best work if you look at it that way, right? Like you have to fully immerse yourself and be insistent upon crushing whatever it is that's in front of you. I had that mentality when I was an intern at Yes Transcribing Tape, and I've tried to have that mentality with every gig I've ever done on air in my career. But if you would have asked me that question of like, oh, do you think you're going to do it for 10 years? I would have said, no, I don't think so. Right. Whereas now, right. when people say like, oh, do you think you'll do it forever? I'm like, maybe, because I love the league. And you know, if, if I'm fortunate enough to be in that position and the league continue to want me to do it, and, and ESPN does as well, and they keep the rights, then, then maybe, because- yeah. I really, really love getting to be the soundtrack to big moments for these amazing women and play a role, hopefully, in growing this league. How is the WNBA perceived from, from your perspective? Like, do, do you think it gets unfairly judged because it's compared to the NBA as opposed to being looked at as its own sport and a league that really is still pretty young? Yeah, I think that the perception has changed a lot in the 10 years uh, that I've been doing this. I definitely sense, um, I, I sense a, a very different uh, perception about the league compared to when I started. Uh, just people understanding the value of it, uh, understanding the way these women have such powerful voices, such beautiful hearts and a willingness to continue to show both of them in public. Uh, and if you think about it, if you're talking about a brand, and I think more and more businesses are understanding this as well, and who you'd want representing your brand, I don't know that there are many better choices out there than the women of the WNBA. And I think that more and more across our country, people have started to realize that and appreciate that. And so instead of, you know, before, People used to love to use the WNBA as a punchline, as a joke. I think now people understand the value, first and foremost, of the basketball and then also of these women and how incredible they are uh, just as these leaders in our society. So I feel like the perception is a lot different, but those comparisons to the NBA do still come up a lot. And Brandon, I agree with your premise that they are unfair. This is something Sue Bird talks about a lot, who's a close friend of mine how how much differently things would be framed when evaluating the WNBA if you weren't comping it to the NBA. Uh, and, and it really isn't a, a fair comp or even it, it's not even a relevant one, really, uh, when you're talking about businesses and leagues. And so I do think that sometimes that sort of unfairly shapes 
the way people view the WNBA and its success uh, because they just look at, oh, and that's the the basketball league where the men play, and, and this is what's happening over there. And it's like, well, no, that's not really the the comp for whether or not this is a successful business right now. Has that narrative started to to change in the last ten years since you've been part of the WNBA? Like, not like have you have you witnessed that that change already? Yeah, I think so. I think it's changed at least. You know, look, if someone has no interest or understanding or awareness really of the WNBA, then I'm sure that's still the primary sure. thought in their mind. But for people who are, you know, a little bit more on the inside or or who are a little bit more tuned into sports, I think that started to break away a little bit. So. It, you know, we're not all the way there, but I do think people have started to understand that just taking whatever's happening in the WNBA and comparing it to the NBA is uh, sort of an ignorant comparison yeah. and <clears throat> just not relevant. Uh, so I think we've started to, to get to that place.